Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Live Lessons. I apologize for the uh, little bit of a technical difficulties. As you know, uh, we have these uh, from time to time, and so I'm glad we're able to get on the air here, uh, if not a couple minutes late. So thanks for your patience and all of that. It's a beautiful night here in Nashville, Tennessee, so welcome. Hey, if you can, type in wherever you're from and uh, type that into the chat so that we have an idea of uh, who all is with us tonight from wherever you are. And uh, it's an honor to have you with us. And just want to tell you how this night's going to go. Tonight we're going to be talking about kind of world guitar, dad gad tuning, alternate tunings. And I can't think of a better person to have with us uh, talking about this than uh, the great Pierre Van Susan. So F uh, Pierre is with us all the way. Our first international guest on Live Lessons, uh, all the way from a little bit outside of Paris. And he is, uh, Pierre's doing a tour here in the U.S. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later on. So... Um, we're also going to be doing some giveaways a little bit later on in the show. So in order to be a part of the giveaways, you need to be logged into us through Ustream.tv. Uh, log in there. Be a part of the chat so we can see you in the chat. And then uh, we'll pick some names and we'll win some stuff. Uh, I think we're giving away a tuner and some other things tonight. So uh, lots of exciting things to happen to get us started off with. Um, let's have Pierre play us a song, if you can, uh, uh, while Pierre's getting uh, set up. Uh, Pierre in 2008 was named the World Guitarist of the Year by Guitar Player Magazine and uh, so many people have been inspired by his playing, myself included. I was uh, showing him before we got started in <coughs> 1988. Uh, I was picked up his book and much of the finger style uh, techniques that I use today uh, were started from learning in that book. So it's an honor, very much an honor to have you here with yes. us. Thank you.
beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, wow, I just so many questions are coming in my mind, just even as you're playing that. Um, how much of that had you worked out, and how much of that was improvised? Oh, it was not improvised. It's a, an old melody I, I came up with when I was, you know, uh, discovering that God, in fact. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of it is so much that God sort of inclination. Yeah. And that guy meeting Celtic music, meeting uh, meeting Irish uh, mm -hmm. qualities, yeah. uh, melody qualities, and a bit of ornamentation, yeah. you know. Um, so I improvise on stage a lot. Mm -hmm. Today I feel like I should be straight <laughs> delivering something uh, more, you know, square, so that I'm not confusing people too much. And uh, <laughs> but um, I just want. I just wanted to expose the melody and the bass line and a few yes. chords here and there just to, just to make it as simple as possible. But then it's not really that simple when you think of it. Yeah. Because the bass, the melody and the bass line are already voicings and they do interact together and once in a while you have a bit of a chord coming around, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, like for instance if you... Mm -hmm. C, B flat, C, mm -hmm. it's F. A minor, D mm -hmm. minor. Right. So that's this melody evolves around that chord progression. Mm -hmm. How did you get started uh, playing music? On a piano, when I was seven years old, my father one, once asked me, we had a piano at home, my sisters were playing classical piano. And, mm -hmm. and um, I was always you know, banging on the piano all the time. So my father mm -hmm. said, would you like to take lessons? I said, yeah, <laughs> sure. And he said, well, my father was at a grocery store. W were was were the, your parents musical? Yeah, yeah. You know, music was just like like the air you mm -hmm. breathe in at home. My father had to listen to music. Was a big fan of Django and mm -hmm. and Stefan Grappelli and Benny Goodman yep. and tango and yep. opera. And so yep. there was on Sunday was a lot of his music that we could yep. all could hear. On the rest of the week, my two sisters were into Coltrane, The Beatles, mm -hmm. Sonny Rollins, <laughs> Elton John, and <laughs> <laughs> and me, I, I, um, I was listening to a lot of classical music at the beginning. Yeah. I was like falling asleep on uh, Rubinstein playing uh, Moonlight Sonata. Yeah. And uh, Xifra playing Chopin. Mm -hmm. So that was like my, my uh, bedtime music. I was like listening to this at loop. And then I discovered two things. I heard Bob Dylan for the first time and I heard mm -hmm. Alan Stivell. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow. <laughs> You know. So you started off on piano. Yeah, and yeah. then and then you switched over to guitar. Yeah, just accidentally, and I taught myself how to play with the help of a friend from school who mm -hmm. taught me how to change strings when you b break strings. You know, mm -hmm. just that simple thing. I didn't know how to change strings. And I didn't know how to tune. When did you When did you pick up the guitar? When I was eleven. So and and I had heard that your dad had given you a, the guitar. Yeah, in fact, m my teacher, mm -hmm. piano teacher, left, went to the south of France. We were living in, uh, we come from North Africa, but we, we, I grew up in Paris and the mm -hmm. suburbs. So my teacher left, went to the south of France, and I felt a bit of orphan. Mm -hmm. I stopped playing piano. Mm -hmm. And then for six months, uh, my father said, my father thought, is he going to go back to piano? And then he thought, this is maybe the time to get him a guitar. Mm -hmm. So he sold the piano and got a guitar. Yeah. And so he still string guitar, and that's how I, I started to play guitar, really. Wow. I just taught myself how to play didn't want to take any more lessons. That teacher was, I tried to replace that teacher, he didn't work, so I said, okay, mm -hmm. that woman was my teacher. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to apply whatever she told me um, when I approached a guitar, mm -hmm. and uh, I, did, I did a lot of ear training, I stopped reading music, I could sight read, read, but I stopped reading music and just you know, learn chords and learn a lot of the songs and did a lot of strumming and accompanied mm -hmm. myself singing. I, I did a lot of singing. And then I heard Pentangle and Bert Jansch and John Rainborn, and mm -hmm. that changed my life. Yeah. So, wow, man, the guitar can do that. Mm -hmm. And then from there to uh, the American folk movement, Woodstock, mm -hmm. Crosby, Nash and Young, Johnny Mitchell, and in England, Cat Stevens, and mm -hmm. Simon and Garfunkel, and all those people had been, you know, Leonard Cohen, mm -hmm. Grim or Wright. Yeah. Mean, people yeah. don't know Grim or Wright here, but yeah. he's a guy from New Zealand who, tra who trans, uh, translated uh, Leonard Cohen into French and mm -hmm. was very, very beautiful. We could 
A lot of French people found out about Leonard Cohen just thanks mm -hmm. to him. Right, right, right. And he was very political, very left-wing, and mm -hmm. it was great. So I, I did sing a lot of that stuff. Yeah, you know. yeah, beautiful. Um, and so, uh, in the early days, you were mentioning that you had started playing bluegrass or were <laughs> interested in bluegrass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love, I love bluegrass. I mean, you know, bluegrass was just uh, phenomenal music. Uh, I went to see Deliverance, a very mm -hmm rough movie ap happening mm -hmm. in the Appalachians mm -hmm. and um, we were all with my friends, circle of friends, listening to a lot of Doc Watson and the Stanley Brothers, wow, and the that's country gentlemen, seldom seen, uh, country cooking, Tony yeah. Trishka, Bill Kiss, Bill Kiss, Bill Kiss, Bill Kiss <laughs> was my mentor and then in Paris I was, um, I was 16, turning to be 17 and, and um, and this guy comes to me, I was starting to play mandolin mm -hmm. because we had a bluegrass band mm -hmm. in Paris and there was no mandolin player around. So my friend said, you pick up the mandolin and you learn it. So, okay, I learned the mandolin. And then that producer was inviting Bill Keys to tour in Europe and he said, mm -hmm. would you like to join his band? I said, what? And you're 17 at this I was time. 17. I said, okay, sure. I joined his band playing, playing mandolin. Jim Rooney, who lives in Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, played guitar and sang. So that was how it started all for me. We went on wow. the road and I was 17. It was like amazing, you know. So I played bluegrass with Bill, a lot of, a lot of mandolin, a bit of guitar, flat peak, use, using, you know, mm -hmm. not my fingers. Mm -hmm. And then one, I, I took my guitar with me on the road and mm -hmm. I started to play those things that I was playing in Fingerstown and Bill was totally, you know, what, what did you, what? <laughs> and uh, he said, okay, you are going to, to play solo, all those things, you are going to play fortune solo at the beginning of the second set in every show. Yeah, and that really. made a very nice contrast with, yeah, with yeah. the bluegrass that we were playing. Mm -hmm. And that's how we started. I, the year later, all the promoters invited me mm -hmm. to play on my own. And uh, I, I took my driving license very quick so that I could do those tours and wow. drive. And I forgot. And I then I start stopped playing bluegrass really from that time. How did you get uh, started playing in alternate tunings? Dad get tunings? Or right away, right away. Not right away exactly. You know, standard was you know, mm -hmm. but but uh, I was in Brittany and um, fooling around with the guitar. You know, like wow, that's very nice. You know, the mm -hmm. thing. You know. And I came across that guy totally randomly by coincidence. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was going to a folk festival in Brittany mm -hmm. with Steve L mm -hmm. and Plank Steve, the group from Ireland. Mm -hmm. And I bought their record. I was so blown up by, by what they did. I never heard that music before. Mm -hmm. And it was so special because it was oriental, yeah. classical, western, chamber music. It was all the things I sort of grew up with. I'm from mm -hmm. Africa, from North Africa. Mm -hmm. And I could feel that quality and that extreme care mm -hmm. into the melody. The melodies were so refined, yeah, so, yeah. so special. Yeah. It, really, it really touched me so deeply. Mm -hmm. So I bought the record and started to adapt Irish music on a guitar thing like... That guy was like, oh my God, it was meant to be, to be <laughs> playing that kind of stuff. So I, that guy, and then I tried other alternative tunings, maybe a dozen mm -hmm. different, different tunings, and wrote pieces in those tunings, and mm -hmm. it was very inspiring. After a few years of that, and playing and starting to perform, you know, mm -hmm. changing strings on mm -hmm. stage, and not strings, tunings on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think always issues with the intonation, breaking strings. I started feeling this, and not knowing my way at all on the fretboard. Right. This is one of the things we talked about last yeah. time. Remember, we talked about alternate tunings. You change one of the strings, and <coughs> well suddenly every note on that string is now in a different place, and you have to relearn that. So it can get rather confusing unless you, uh, you start to get familiar with uh, a specific tuning, start to hone in, and that's c what you've done with the yeah, Dad Gun. Yeah, I felt that I had to, okay, stick to one tuning, which I felt the most close to, and uh, finally start learning the fretboard mm -hmm. for, for the first time. Mm -hmm. So I choose Dad Gun. Kind of explain to the, explain to the folks what we're, what we're you doing. You tune down your first bass string, like from E to D, and you, your two treble strings, one step. 
So you do have strings issues because if you use a normal set of strings, the, the extremities are going to sound quite slacky a little bit. Yeah. It's going to change your approach to it, your sensitivity. So what I did after some time, not right away, but after some time I tried to find a, a set of strings which will sort of make it, you know, logical, you know, yeah. approachable. So I, I make a combination of medium for the three strings tuned down and a light gauge for the other strings. And the, the wall rendition of it is like light gauge, basically. Mm -hmm. Except that the two treble strings are slightly, the diameter is a bit wider. So mm -hmm. the feel is different. Mm -hmm. But it sounds, the feel, the touch is, is natural when playing that guy with that sort of um, gauges, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, ha you end up with those three Ds mm -hmm. and those two As mm -hmm. and that G. And I like that opposed to a minor or major chord. Right. Right. Because that's too colored for me. I like right. the, op the opening qualities. Mm -hmm. It was a real open tuning. Yeah. And from there, I played a lot of things with D, 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 and sometimes I use a capo, you know, to change the mm -hmm. I was not like looking for to play chords and to learn chords. Mm -hmm. But when I'm, I switched to, uh, to only play that guy, this is when I started to study the guitar more academically, more scientifically, like... Uh, yeah. C. Mm -hmm. You play C chord, that's it, that guy disappears right away. Mm -hmm. You are no longer in that guy. A C major? Mm -hmm. That's it, you know. <laughs> oh, nice, it's there. <laughs> C sharp. I went from an open tuning to, the, to using the best qualities of what the open tuning offers, which is like the wall resonant, very emphatic, yeah. you know, to, to try to, um, to work uh, so that I could, I could uh, tame that. Right, right. I could diminish the, the all resonant and, and yeah. start in, instead of uh, making something really big, trying to make it intimate. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, <laughs> It took me like 20 years to come to that, <laughs> to, 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 to start understanding why some, sometimes I was bothered by too much sound. Yeah, yeah. I knew I how to produce sound with my right hand, but I, I didn't know how to sort of work in a way where I will control mm -hmm. the, the, the life of those notes. Mm -hmm. And so when you start doing this, simply two bass strings, mm -hmm using two fingers, mm -hmm. you realize that you can play your bass with a different finger on not only the thumb, but sometimes the index, mm -hmm. while the thumb goes back to rest on the first bass strings to kill that resonance. Right. At the same time. Right. Same thing between index and the middle finger. Mm -hmm. Between the middle finger and the ring finger. Yeah? Right, right. I remember talking with Russ Berenberg one time, and he was saying, um, he started talking about listen at the, listen for the ends of your notes. Don't listen for the beginnings of your notes. Everybody listens for the beginnings. Listen to where the note ends. C try to control how the note ends. Yeah. And that uh, uh, builds that sustain in the playing. That that uh, smoothness as you're going in between notes, which is difficult on a guitar because you're sometimes <laughs> strings are open, sometimes they're fretted, and so all of these things a factor how long a note is. So extra care and paying attention how those are... Well, I mean, this is what we do. Yeah. We, we have to be our first listeners, and we, do our, we are responsible for the sound we create. Yeah. So if you listen only to a portion of that sound and ignore the other portion of that sound, where do you think it's going to lead you? Yeah. Nowhere. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So you, you are responsible for the life of a note. 
and you have the life of a note in your hand. Mm -hmm. But the life of a note is also depending on the life of another note. And this is harmony yeah. and voicings and counterpoint. All those notes make sense together because you, you care about their, their, their lengths mm -hmm. and how you make them born and how you make them die. Yeah. You know. Let's talk about a little bit about your, your technique. One of the techniques that, that uh, as I've been listening to um, um, Pierre's CD, he graciously sent me his latest CD, um, and as I've been listening to that, one of the techniques that just is so magical in his playing is the use of harmonics. Um, can you illustrate a little bit some of your... Well, I mean, you have the natural harmonics. You mm -hmm. then you have combination between them. And then you have all those false harmonics. Mm -hmm. You basically recreate here the drawings that your fingers create there. Mm -hmm. And you transpose, you know, like C, C 12 frets higher. Mm -hmm. And you use either those fingers, index, and, and little finger mm -hmm. or ring finger. Mm -hmm. Problem with ring finger is that my nails mm -hmm. would make maybe a bit of noise yeah. on the fretboard. So whenever I'm, I'm doing those false harmonics over the fretboard, I will use my little finger. Yeah. As soon as I'm over the sound hall, mm -hmm. I can use the, the, um, the ring finger closely. Now, and sometimes even the middle finger, because the more you go in that direction, right. the less space you have. All right. Now, are you? let's talk about nails there for a second, just as I'm noticing your nails. Uh, are those natural? Are those <laughs> no, fake? No, my God, they are not natural. <laughs> I would be a monster if they were. <laughs> they are acrylic. Because they, they look so thick, and I thought, oh my yeah. goodness, that can't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, they are not very beautiful to watch, I'm afraid, but it's okay, I don't care. <laughs> um, it's because they have been here for a while, mm -hmm. and so it's an acrylic gel mm -hmm. that you place throughout the wall surface of your natural nail. Mm -hmm. You, I built that myself, but for a long time I used to go to a salon and mm -hmm. have a woman building mm -hmm. those nails on only one hand, of mm -hmm. course, the hand that picks the strings. Mm -hmm. And so basically what you do is that you, you have, you have a, a tool to pick those strings mm -hmm. because a natural nail, mm -hmm. with the reaction of a natural nail with metal, with steel strings, like those strings uh, act like files, yeah. nail files. And after three hours of playing, there is no more nail. Yeah. You either diminish the length of the nail or you break the nails. Mm -hmm. So I could, for a long time, you know, I play with a thumb pick and no, and no nail. Mm -hmm. and my technique was all flesh and thumb pick. Mm -hmm. My first two records, I mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. were done like that. I started to, to, to think about the tone later in time, not mm -hmm. right away. I mean, right away, the thing that uh, occurred to me was to produce sound mm -hmm. with my right hand. Mm -hmm. And so I was not really thinking what I was doing, I was just doing what yeah, I was yeah. doing. But I had no, no um, second thoughts. Mm -hmm. I was not thinking it's good, it's bad, it's, I, sh I should do this a different way, mm -hmm. more rational. Mm -hmm. Then I started to think deeper when I started to, to see other people playing, like classical mm -hmm. player, flamenco players, mm -hmm. with their right hand being yeah. so free, so uh, agile. And I started to feel my right hand is really like a piece of wood. There is something there which is so not right, you know. Mm -hmm. So that start, I started to look at my right hand differently. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I'm self-taught. So nobody mm -hmm. told me really what to do right at first. So I had mm -hmm. to sort of find out those things by myself, watching other people, discussing with friends, listening mm -hmm. to other musicians, listening to records, and starting to listen to tone, yeah. to how you would touch, you know. <laughs> All nail, mm -hmm. all flesh. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things that also struck me was your, your wonderful use of, of kind of harp effects on the guitar. We didn't, we did, sorry, we didn't, I didn't finish. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Regarding sorry. the harmonics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you were, you were wondering something like those harmonics like mm -hmm.
In fact, you, you are looking for all the harmonics on any notes. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that mm, they are somewhere, you know, <laughs> they are not always coming out. But beautiful, beautiful. Sorry, what was the question? About the, uh, some of the harp effects. Ah, the harp effect comes from playing the piano. Is the idea is to di to distribute the notes of a melody on as many strings you can instead mm -hmm. of on one or two strings. Like mm -hmm. instead of doing where you hear one note at a time, you are going to try to to have those, those notes and play with uh, polyphony or resonances. Mm -hmm. The idea is that you learn a, st a scale, for instance, like mm -hmm. D major. Instead of doing the B here, here. you are going to find the B. Mm -hmm. And you hear the A and the B together. Yeah. And then you keep pressing that B here. You have the C sharp and this mm -hmm. D open. Mm -hmm. you have all three of them right And here. you can then select which one you want to, you know, if you want the three of them, you create that dissonance. But you can also mm -hmm. stop pressing one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, let me, uh, let's see, I've wrote myself so many notes uh, to talk about. Uh, let's give away uh, something while we're just kind of coming up for air. Um, Pierre has a new CD uh, come uh, out vividly, which he sent me, and I've listened to it probably a hundred times. Um, when did you When did you record that? Two years ago. Two years ago. Um, so we're going to give away a, a vividly CD, and he's going to autograph that before he goes uh, today. So the winner of the CD is Montana Ardvark. So, Montana Aardvark, uh, you have just won yourself uh, an autographed uh, Pierre Vincius on CD. Congratulations. So congratulations to you. Um, mm. uh, Montana, I know that's not your real name. Hopefully that's not your real name, Montana Aardvark. But, Why not? Uh, Why not? <laughs> it could that's be, it's a great a, it's name. It's a it wonderful name. Great. I shouldn't. It would have been tough to be at school when you were a kid with a name like that. But, but, but perhaps, I don't know. Um, uh, if you could email us at uh, service at LegacyLearningSystems.com and uh, we can uh, just email us all your information, your address and, and uh, phone number and stuff, and we will get that out to you. So all of our winners uh, tonight, uh, just email that to us and we, can, and we can get that information. Fabian, maybe you can put up that link for us as well. Um, while we're kind of taking a break for a second, can you play us another tune?
Wonderful. And short, I need a little bit, so we have a bit more time to talk. <laughs> um, one of the things I was noticed that you're playing, um, uh, talk about your use of uh, vibrato as you're moving your yeah, instrument yeah. And, and what is involved with that. To someone just looking on, they may not realize actually what is, what is happening. In fact, there. we have the great luck to play steel strings, mm -hmm. and so we can, we can move, we can do t three things. We mm -hmm. can either move the, 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 the box of the guitar mm -hmm. without any implication on the neck. Just mm -hmm. hold the guitar a little bit like this, going in that direction, so that the angle, the leg here, mm -hmm. stops the guitar to move forward. Mm -hmm. So the guitar goes like this. We hold it here. Mm -hmm. So we hold it, we retain it. Mm -hmm. We have the sound, you know, inside of the box coming out by grapes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. The other is to push on a, any any note, to open strings, fretted mm -hmm. strings. You're pushing ever I'm so pushing slightly on the neck. Slightly, but I'm not doing this because I'm playing, so I'm doing... You, like this. Can you see that? He's using his palm on the back of the neck. And so the pitch goes down because I reduce the vibrating length of the string. So the pitch goes down, and I can do the other way around. Pull, and the pitch goes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So... That's a great way to work on open strings. <laughs> but on a chord... And on a chord with no open strings, which is different from yeah. mm -hmm. of the, just a normal. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. When Talk. you have combinations of open strings and fretted strings. Mm -hmm. well, I never thought to do that. I just never thought to do that. Talk about your guitar a little bit. That a lot of folks ask on the. Uh, My guitar is about. made by George Loudon, mm -hmm. with a luthier who lives like 25 miles away from Belfast, on the coast in Down Patrick, where mm -hmm. St. Patrick is down mm -hmm. <laughs> in County Down, <laughs> yes. and uh, so that's Northern Ireland, just the north east of the island, about like two hours away from Dublin. Mm -hmm. And so I met George in 1977. Mm -hmm. And I got my first Loudon in 1978. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I only played in that gat. Mm -hmm. And then that guitar is my first signature mm -hmm. Loudon guitar that uh, is already now three years old. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a very different kind of wood than what I usually played with. This one is Adirondack spruce, uh, rosewood from Honduras, maple neck, which is a great wood to conduct the sound very quickly. It's very fast. Mm -hmm. um, ebony. Uh, uh, fretboard, a bit of maple here as well in the purfling. Mm -hmm. We have a bit of pear tree for the purfling, a uh, bit of a rosewood here, or maybe it's an ebony as well, I'm not sure. Uh, rosewood saddle, um, um, high Highlander pickup. Highlander. I'm very happy I only play acoustic right now, but <laughs> I, do, I do also use a pickup, mm -hmm. and I trigger a bit of reverb and a volume pedal, that's mm -hmm. all, and a bit of EQ. Mm -hmm. So I blend the, the sound of them condense the microphone with a pickup usually. Right, right, right. Yeah, but I prefer to play it just acoustic like now. It gets, it gets so such a warm and rich sound. It's beautiful. 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 Uh, while we let Pierre rest for just a second, we have to take care of a little bit of uh, business. Um, wanted to let you know uh, we had our... Uh, Newsletter came out this morning. Hopefully, most of you got our newsletter. Uh, if you didn't, uh, Fabian, maybe you could put up the link um, for that, and uh, so folks can uh, download that. One of the things we had in our newsletter this month, since Pierre was here, I've just been it was kind of as we were approaching this, I wanted to kind of focus on alternate tunings and and kind of expand your mind a little bit uh, beyond just standard tuning and the rich colors. As you can see, gosh, just every chord. In, in a different tuning suddenly takes on a, a very rich character. <coughs> um, and so we wanted to give you some resources for that. So I'm all about uh, resources. So I uh, found a couple of resources by our good friends over at Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Uh, they put out this book um, called Explore Alternate Tunings. And uh, it's a lot of the, the folks that contribute to 
uh, Acoustic Guitar Magazine. So it comes with a, it's a, it's a good introductory book into the world of alternate tunings. Gives you uh, some different ones. Drop D, um, Dad Gad, of course, talks about that. Talks about C tuning as well, high strung tuning. We talked about that. And it, plus it also gives you some great songs. Um, Box Cello Suite is worth, um, in G, is worth the price of the book alone. Uh, anyway, it's a great resource. The second book that I found for tunings was a book what, that I was not familiar with. The author, Mark, his name is Mark Shark. Kind of a boy, you can be a musician with a name like that. And um, his book is called The Tao of Tunings. And it comes with a book and a CD as well. If you're interested in opening your world up a little bit into the, the sounds of uh, these altered tunings, I couldn't think of, uh, these are the best resources I researched for a couple of weeks. These are the best resources I have come across um, that we have found uh, for some of that. Pierre also has a book, oh, which I, it's on the table over there. Um, John, maybe you can grab that for me. Um, it's not part of our resources, um, but it's at his website. So thank you, John. Um, this is uh, Pierre's book, uh, The Guitar Book, and this is my copy that I bought in 1988. And uh, wow. uh, so I am thrilled. Uh, the first piece that he played was... Uh, not every note was in, written in this, but no. most, most of them were. Anyway, uh, so many of the techniques uh, that I learned how to do fingerstyle uh, guitar have come out of this book. In fact, this book is, um, has a, a combination of tunes from my first four records, mm -hmm. plus exercises, mm -hmm. uh, sketches, and a, a glossary of term terminations, mm -hmm. uh, terms that are used in the guitar, my little take on those. Mm -hmm. A bit of poetry, cooking recipes, photography, paintings, poems. Quotes, all, all kinds, kinds of things. things. Yeah. Um, this is not part of our resources, and I don't make a dime from this. Go buy this book. This is at Pierre's website, uh, uh, pierrebensusan.com. Yeah, that's right? it. Yep, and mm -hmm. uh, Fabian, you have that link. It's a little bit later on in the thing, but throw that up now. And so you can buy this directly off of, his, off of Pierre's website. Anyway, now... Um, Back to our resources. Another thing I also found, since we're doing all this tuning, I thought it'd be great to feature uh, uh, by uh, our good friends at Onboard Research, the IntelliTouch tuner. It's kind of a tuner you clip on the end. I like this little guy. I've used this on the road. I use this all the time. Um, it changes color when you're in tune, and you just know. So I don't have to worry too much about where it's at. I can look at a glance and, and tune my guitar quickly and easily. This is part of our resources as well. Um, as well as a song hits course that I did. So I don't, I don't want to bore you with all that sort of stuff. Anyway, go to our resource page. We've got deals on all that sort of stuff. And uh, check them out. It's great resources. I'm all about that. Um, let's give away one more thing. We're going to give away this tuner. This is the little P10 smaller tuner, which I have in my guitar case right now. Um, someone's going to win this. The winner of this is DD Mini. DD Mini? Uh, D-D-M-I-N-I, -I. you have just won yourself this tuner. Uh, email us at service at LegacyLearningSystems.com and uh, get us your information. We will send this out to you. So um, there you go. Um, I, we need to have one break now because we need to do one technical thing. So hang with us for about 30 seconds. We will be right to you with more uh, Pierre Bensusan. Thank you. Furthering your education, Legacy Learning Systems offers a unique resource to all students, the Learn and Master Online Community. Here you can communicate with fellow students and course instructors and immerse yourself into an interactive community where knowledge, fun facts, and experiences are shared. Signing up is easy. Take your learning to the next level, the Learn and Master Online Community, your place for serious instruction. Okay. Well, thanks. We had to do some technical things there real quick uh, that we have to kind of break the show up. So I realize we're a little bit off uh, time tonight, so we're going to just jump right into some questions. Um, if you guys have questions, uh, type them in the chat, and we will try and get to uh, some of those if we can. Um, one question, Nani1 uh, says, has uh, Pierre wrote for TV or movies? I did uh, once wrote for an animation movie about it was a um, 
a production in a planetarium in France. It was a, a, a story told by a voice, mm -hmm. a guy who was um, a storyteller who wrote about the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. And so it was a planetarium with the planets, uh, you know, the, the being of, of the galaxy and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I, I wrote a movie on that thing. Have you... Um, uh, um, Amaranth315 says, any, uh, do you have any tips or exercises uh, for achieving some of the large stretches that you're doing? Any kind of finger uh, stretching, hand just stretching? Just a little exercise like this. And then what, do you, what are you doing there? Um, okay. I'm using the 12, 13, 14, and, and um, 15 thread. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to let my fingers go down. Okay. Index down one fret, middle down one fret. Mm -hmm. Index down one fret, little up one fret. This is the end of my first pattern, and mm -hmm. I end up with an empty fret in between each finger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I keep my thing, my little, my index, sorry, mm -hmm. in the tenth fret, and I bring the, the other three fingers next to it in mm -hmm. the uh, 11, 12, and 13 fret, and I go on. And every time I end this pattern, I end up with an empty fret, mm -hmm. and I go on. This exercise, which is quite beautiful, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is also helping your interpalmar muscles to mm -hmm. become elastic. Mm -hmm. And so in order to stretch, you need to work on that, the palm and those interpalmar muscles to be elastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. One of the, when, P, when uh, um, Phil Kagi was with us a couple, who you're going to have dinner with tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when Phil Kagi was with us a few months back, he taught basically this, a similar exercise where you would take a chord like this. Yes, nice. Beautiful, too. And you just work your way down. Et yeah. um, same thing. Taking a hand position of adjacent strings and adjacent frets, and you move it down. You slowly work your way down. As you work your way down the neck, the frets are getting wider. Your hand is stretching more and more. Right. So as you do this for a week or two, you'll notice that you're able to get farther down the neck and still be clean in your playing, and that's the whole, that's the whole idea. The whole point, yeah. Um, uh, uh, TGNY TG is asking, is Pierre bringing his thumb over the top of the fretboard? Like, and, like this? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes like... Now, do you use it for notes? Do you play bass notes on it occasionally? You mean like doing mm -hmm. things like this? Very rarely. Yeah. Because it's a lot of effort. Yeah. yeah. We had uh, our last guest last uh, month was Tom Bresch. Yeah. And uh, and he was all over with yeah. that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. With uh, all of the Merle Travis style. And uh, and so I, I was just amazed. I said, how... It's great. We can do it. It's great because our, our, the, the width of the fretboard allows us to do that. The thing is, yeah. as soon as you go on a classical guitar, you cannot do that anymore. Yeah. And if you write music so that some people playing classical mm -hmm. will also approach what you write, you also have to make your fingerings affordable for them. Yeah. It has to work both ways. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's good to at least give uh, the options that you can also do in, in a str more for, uh, formal way. We, one of the questions that was on our website um, by Bob from Nacogdoches, Texas, my home state. Um, Bob says, "How do you, uh, Pierre? How do you handle uh, nerves? You're like you're on a, you're on a big I tour drink. now." <laughs> no, I, I work. I, 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 I play as as much as I can to the point where I build my confidence, and I also I'm not alone. I'm with the music. And the music is is a dear friend. It's not like um, you know. It's not like you are alone playing music, and it's, this music is totally alien to you. In fact, you are creating a, a, a world of sound that that you you just have to dive in and listen to it, and and forget about yourself, and just listen to what comes under your fingers, and just that attention to what you what you 
what you create with your fingers should be enough to, f to make you forget about yourself. I think the nervous thing is when you are so abstracted by yourself, you are not in peace with yourself because you are forget forget simply forgetting to, to listen to what you do. Mm -hmm. So just listen to what you do and it will help you to forget about yourself. And when you forget about yourself, you are much less nervous. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, you mentioned the music as your as your friend. Yes, you as you were playing in your in your home and as you were practicing, uh, your best companion is the sounds that you are making from your instrument. Uh, one of the best teachers you will ever have is your own creativity, your own listening to your playing and just curiosity. How do I? How would I make that sound? How do I go all the way back there and do that? Um, your own creativity sometimes will be one of your best teachers that you'll have in your in your uh, musical life. Um, Pierre is is on a an extended tour. I did not realize that you had already been out for three months. Australia, China, uh, Germany, Austria, England, France. Yeah. And now you and now are United States and Canada. You are here in the United States, and mm. uh, I had my sheets down here. Um, he, Pierre is going to be all over the U.S. Uh, for the next, well, till about mid-July. Uh, he cl finishes out with the Montreal Jazz Festival. Uh, I saw that up Montreal there. would be at the end of June. Then I go to, uh, then I I play no upstate New York, and mm -hmm. I finish with uh, Toronto, and another city, um, um, which is going to be west of Toronto in Guelph, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then from there, um, Detroit, and fly fly home. Um, Fabian, maybe you can put up the link for his tour. Uh, if you are, I would go through the the, the cities, but there are way too many. I mean, it, it is just, he is everywhere. Uh, Alabama, New York, uh, Washington, out in Spokane, Washington, my good friends out in Spokane, California, Arizona, uh, Pennsylvania, Canada. Um, so all over. So Fabian, if you could put up that link, uh, check it out. He very well may be in an area that is close to you. He's going to be in Nashville at World Music uh, tomorrow night. Um, tickets, I think, are 20 bucks. And so if you're interested in uh, uh, catching Pierre, if you're in the Nashville area, um, come on out to World Music tomorrow night. I'm sure it'll be an amazing, Thank you. amazing time. Um, as we're closing up, um, I want to give away one more thing. Um, um, we talked a, at the, a little bit ago about Pierre's book, um, the guitar book, uh, which has been out quite a while, and I wanted to give away um, the, uh, doesn't have a physical uh, version of it here with him, so we're going to give away a PDF version of this. Anything else you want to say about guitar About book? About what? About the book? Yeah. Oh, I could uh, speak for hours about this book. Yeah. I made it in, in, in I took six years to make it. Yeah. Six years. And it came out in 1986, so yeah. two years before you bought it. Yeah. And um, I had this idea to make a, a sort of book uh, related to my life, mm -hmm. not only to music, but just to, to give the message, message that uh, music was just part of life. Mm -hmm. and so the quality of music is also the quality of the life. You try to, to, in fact, that you have to sort of put quality into whatever everything you do. Yes. Not only not only music, but everything. So. That's why I wanted to, you know, to give an, uh, a bit of uh, insight on poems. Um, so I asked uh, my wife, who's mm -hmm. been helping me. This is a book we wrote together. Mm -hmm. She was very, very instrumental in making this book happen. But I had poems written by friends, by my father-in-law, by mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. paintings from my grandmother-in-law, cooking recipes from my mother, from my <laughs> mother-in-law, from myself, from my wife. Um, and then um, I saw I try to make a book, you know, progressing into you no know, yeah. difficulty, a bit of progressing, but it's, it's difficult because sometimes I I feel something easy, easy, and for someone it's going to be very very challenging. Yeah. So um, I will I would tell people to approach a piece one measure at a time. Right. To truly really try to play, to to hear themselves and to trust in the ability of what they hear. As soon as something feels not right, very probably it means it's not right. So to work on that thing, not really force your way through the piece, leaving a lot of, of dark spaces behind yeah. you, but try to really play, 
clean to make the notes neutral so that they can just be, you know, what they are mm -hmm. and go, go in the piece like that. Mm -hmm. One of the things I, I, I learned from the, from the book is it, it goes through, it has wonderful pieces in it, but it also talks about the techniques involved. Some of the harp technique stuff we talked about tonight uh, is coming right out of that book. So we do have a winner for the book. Um, the winner of the guitar book uh, PDF is uh, K Busby, K I B U S B Y, K Busby. Um, All those guys are very weird names. These are their 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 discussion board screen names. So crazy, crazy names. They are hiding behind those <laughs> names. <laughs> um, so K Busky, K Busby. You have won the version, uh, uh, PDF version of Congra that book. Congrats. Congratulations. Yeah. That. Uh, send us an email at service at Legacy Learning Systems. Please pick up your prizes. Uh, we had one uh, last time we had a, a live lesson. Someone didn't pick up their prize, so please pick up your prizes. Um, all right. As we're closing things out, we have one last question. Uh, Turtle Tattoo is asking, um, is the neck on your guitar thinner? Than on other guitars, it doesn't seem. Uh, to be. It's not thinner, but there is more space between the strings here. We have 12 millimeters between each string, so that we we can use more right hand techniques, a bit almost as wide as a classical guitar would be. Yeah, but, but it's not. It's not, not a thinner. two inch. It's not two inch. Up I here. think it's 45 here. Yeah, yeah. 45 millimeters. So I'm not sure in English, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In American measurements how yeah. it is. Um. It's, it's very. It would be very easy to play because the the strings are just a little bit further apart down here, and right. that uh, that helps out. Great question. Um, okay, since we started late, I I need to wrap things up. Um, let me give you a couple of last minute announcements as we are are winding down. Uh, if you didn't get our newsletter, Fabian, you can put up the link for that. Check it out. There's a bunch of uh, all kinds of good stuff in there. I did a new lesson on. Uh, a uh, little bit of jazz guitar lesson on jazzing up the 251. So I give you some good uh, pointers on that, as well as uh, the tab and the music is written out for that as well. So you can download that. That's in our uh, newsletter. Also, the student of the month from Ireland, John Leonard, Jay Leo from our discussion board. You are our Learn and Master Guitar student of the month. So everybody give Jay Leo a uh, a hard time since he is the student of the month. Now you're never going to be able to get out of the house. <laughs> Just paparazzi everywhere. Um, and uh, I did an article as well about talking about perfection and uh, um, dealing with some of those issues. Uh, we won't be having a live lesson next week just because I'm going to take the week off. So we will not have a live lesson next week, but we will be on the week after that, which would be May 29th, and we're just going to have an open talk. We'll probably also be talking about some of the, the, the techniques that we uh, Pierre has introduced us to. And then I also wanted to talk about, uh, a lot of folks have been asking about gear, so we're going to be talking about a volume pedal uh, and how, uh, how that affects your sound, what great things you can do with that on your, uh, on your guitar, with your guitar I'm playing. using a volume pedal, too. <laughs> yeah. With, Not now, with, but when I play electroacoustic, I have a, I, I have my footrest, and I put my volume pedal on the top of the footrest. Now, so my, my right foot is always on a volume pedal. Do you are you running through a processor? Sorry, we're just going to talk for a second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> please, <do with> us. <laughs> um, yeah, you know I use this Islander mm -hmm. pickup, so I go through from the Islander into um, wireless uh, line six kind of things mm -hmm. so that I can. Move, move around and yeah. stand up and and then from the wireless into the volume pedal and from the volume pedal into uh, uh, radial pizzi pre so that I can work on the tone of my piezo and mm -hmm. make the sound a bit fatter mm -hmm. and uh, work on those frequencies a little bit mm -hmm. and then from the pizzi pre into an even tied uh, river pedal called the space pedal mm -hmm. And, and that's there, delays and, and whatnot. No delays. I mean, I just use use EQ, a bit, okay. a, a, you know, a good DI mm -hmm. out of the uh, even out of the out of the even tied into a dual DI, a mm -hmm. radial dual mm -hmm. DI from the radial dual DI to the mixer. Wow. Stereo left and right XLR. And then what's giving you the stereo signal? The reverb is doing is giving the stereo. Ah. Okay. But I'm also mm -hmm. using a condenser mic, a shop's microphone, mm -hmm. in front of the, in the, in the uh, between the 12 and the 16 frets, mm -hmm. never in front of the sound hall, but mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And so we blend so the sound of the mic, the piezo, we blend them together. Beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. Um, 
Great. Sorry, we just got busy. I knew what it's, y'all were interested in that, and I was interested in, in how that works as well. Um, okay, we also have all of our lessons up on the Gibson Skills House. Uh, Fabian, maybe you can put up the link for that, for the Skills House lessons. Uh, let's see, what do we? I put up a new lesson on jazz turnarounds, kind of have a jazz theme this month. Um, and then we have a couple of songs that some of the other instructors have done uh, in a completely other guitar vein. Uh, they're doing Iron Man by Black Sabbath and All Day and All Night by The Kinks. So if you're interested in learning those songs, then uh, please check those out. Um, also, if you like what we do, uh, then please like us underneath the Ustream window that you are watching right now. There's a couple of, uh, there's three buttons. One of them goes to our resource page. Another one goes to the uh, guitar course. And then I think the middle one goes to our Facebook page. So if you like what we're doing, then uh, please like us on Facebook. That helps uh, That helps us out. Um, <laughs> we had a request to play together. Hmm. I'm in standard tuning and he's in dadgad and we don't know anything, although we were working and we were doing a little groove uh, before we started. Um. There you go. Something to something to sail you out with. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Glad you're here. Please uh, tune us in next time. Go home. Practice a little bit. Hug your kids extra extra hard tonight. No, don't practice. Just play. Just play. That's right. Even better. Just play. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye bye.